service. We're so happy to see each and every one of you come out. Take the time out of your day to come worship with us in spirit and in truth. Just a few quick announcements I have this evening before we get started. I want to uh, keep a couple in our prayers. Uh, we want to keep Deborah Clark in our prayers. We want to keep uh, Sister Jan in our prayers. Uh, Kay Maddox is having some, some medical issues with her blood pressure. We want to keep her in our prayers. It was good to see Miss Vicky here this morning, but she started flaring up, so she took the night off tonight. Uh, Brother Dale's uh, out sick, so let's just keep all those in our prayers. Also have some folks that uh, uh, that have passed. We want to remember them. They can be found in the bulletin, and uh, and then Buzz, Buzz's cousin, has also passed from COVID uh, last week, so we want to keep him and his family uh, in, in our prayers as well. Also, this tomorrow, we just want everybody to know that tomorrow's our, our prayer night. Everyone's welcome. Starting at 7 o'clock. And I also want to remind everyone that this Saturday uh, will be Ladies Bible Study starting at 10 a.m. So everyone's invited, if you're a lady, to come to the Bible Study. And this evening's worship service, Brother Joel Foster will be leading our song service. Uh, Brother Dennis will have our lesson. Brother Dennis will also be serving the Lord's table to those who did not have an opportunity this morning. And Brother David Norman will have us our closing prayer at the end of service. And Mr. Barney will open us up uh, in prayer. Brother Barney. <coughs> God, Jehovah, our Father in heaven, we're so humbly thankful unto thee, Father, for this is the Lord's day. We're able to come out and worship thee in spirit and in truth as thou wilt is direct. We seek to honor thee, Father. We want to give thee all the honor and glory that is so rightfully due unto thee. We cannot thank thee enough, Father, for thy love and thy mercy and thy kindness, the extension of thy grace to us, the most wonderful gift of thy Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, your Lamb that took away the sins of the world. greater gift could we ever receive Father and we seek to honor him this day of remembering all that he has done for us we truly do not have the words Father to express our love for thee and the thankfulness that we have in our hearts you are our God and that you love and care about us. And we 
we ask that you be with us in all that we endeavor to do for thee. And as thy son said, Father, we seek to emulate him and not only going about and doing that which is good, said thy will be done and not mine but we wish that in every aspect of our life Father that you are the center of our lives and that your will in every way would be done in our own lives and the only way that we seek to please men Father is having them to see the truth of thy will and bring her in obedience to it. And that we glorify thee because of this. We know that all men will not see that truth in the light of thy son. And we're sorry for this. We know that you made us free moral agents and we have the right to choose what we want to do. Far too many choose not to even know thee. But that's not our will, Father. We want to learn as much about thee as possible. That we can glorify thee and we can live lives that bring the honor to thee. can never thank thee enough for all that you've done for us. And all the tragedies that seem to follow so many in this life. We want to turn more to thee than ever before. For we know that if we gain the entire world, if you're not part of that, we have nothing Yet we are blessed in so many ways that we have everything because of you. Not only our lives, but the salvation that we have in thy son, but our families, our immediate families, but our, our kindred, not only that, Father, the church is a family. And we are truly thy children because we seek to please thee. And your son is the king of all kings. And in his kingdom we will do whatever thy word teaches us to do, that which is right before thee. Father, the simplicity that is found in the gospel of thy Son should be seen by all, all mankind. What more could they ever want? For when this life is over, a greater gift than you, a person could ever have, a soul than to be with thee and thy Son and the Holy Spirit forever, to live in eternity, being protected and blessed by thee forever. The alternative to that, Father, is unthinkable. And why are there so many that seek that path that's beyond me? I pray for them, Father not for the wicked things that they do, but for their souls. But we do care for their souls. As you cared for their souls, we care for their souls. We want all men everywhere to be saved. But unfortunately, the majority of people have no idea of what laid in store for them because of the rejection of you. We're grateful and thankful, Father, 
for the true blessing, that our eyes were open to the word of thy truth. And may it always be that way for as long as we live. For in the eternity, it will be that way. And we seek that now. Help us to ever be faithful to thee, Father. That our faith and trust that no matter what happens in this life, that we will always stand with thee in all things. There are many among us, Father, that are seeking Thee in prayer in so many ways. They seek Thy truth. Help them to see it, Father. Those that are on beds of affliction that need Thy healing hand, we pray that You would give it to them, Father. Those that have so many mental and other personal problems that You would be with them and comfort them and help them to realize that all things are possible through thee. And let us always be thankful and grateful unto thee and humbly walk with thee, Father. Because of your love and care for us, that we do submit ourselves, Father. And it's not our light, Father, that we wish to shine. Those about us can see your light shining in us because we seek to glorify thee in all things. For the rulers of this world, we ask that you would intervene, Father, in the lives of all men. Not that you would disrupt their own will, their own choosing, that the majority of people in this world would see that things could be so much better for all mankind if we would just love our neighbor as we love ourselves to help all men everywhere see that we all come from the first man and woman in that respect, we're all brothers and sisters. And never let a Christian ever be the type of person that would condemn somebody because of their color or their speech or anything that's different from them. We are truly of one blood because your word teaches it. And that's matter most of all. We have the blood that you put into our bodies and we're of one blood. We're not animals. We're not vegetables. We're not rot. or anything of that sort. We're human beings, male and female. And why is that? so hard to comprehend for so many people. It doesn't make sense. If people would only read and study that word, perhaps they could come to a, lot, a knowledge of truth to help them at least get through this life in a decent manner. But it has been for a long time, Father, and you know that I care about the souls of all men everywhere, even the people that do things that I do not like. Because you and your son want all men to be saved. I feel the same way. And I'm so thankful that I have brothers and sisters in Christ that love thee and feel the same way. We care about other people, even when times they think we don't. They got to know and understand us because we seek to serve and please thee. They would see it and stop thinking about being selfish about their own will and way. We don't have the full comprehension of fatherhood like you, Father. But we love our own children and we want what's best for them. 
Some people cannot see that today. We're thankful that the Supreme Court of our land sought to do away such a foolish law to allow children to be born. Do not children have the right to be born as we and other people to live the lives that we want? Of course we do. Why would these people see that and appreciate it? Father, I ask for your divine intervention. Do not let this country be destroyed as other countries have been because they've turned their back on thee. There are far too many good people still here that would do thy will if given the opportunity and help us to see that they get their opportunity. Ask our forgiveness in the things that we do wrong. We're thankful for thy mercy and the truth of thy word that when we confess our wrongdoing, that you will forgive us and help us to be the same way. That no matter what is done to us, we will always be ready and willing to forgive those that do not do us wrong. Savior Jesus Christ. Help us to live daily a life that would be pleasing unto thee. That when thy son returns again, we will be caught up in the air and remain with him forevermore. It's through his most holy name that we give thanks unto thee.
firstborn light in gloom decline. But while God and I shall be, I am His and He is mine. But while God and I shall be,
about your last moment on this earth. Taking that one last look at the final sunset. Getting ready to make the journey into another dimension that transcends time and mortality. The history is filled with so-called last spoken words. People who knew that their time had come. Some of those were spoken in despair, like Voltaire, who said, I am abandoned by God and man. I shall go to hell. But then there were those who were inspirational, like John Wesley, where his final words were the best of all, God is with us. When we get to take that last look in our lives, God's word is going to shed light on what our life is like. It is there in 2 Timothy chapter 2, or 2 Timothy chapter 4, where Paul gives us a final look at his life. I want you to picture, if you will, Paul stopping there at death's door. And there he turns around and he looks back on his life. 
a life that was full of sacrifice and hardship, a life that was also filled with joy. But now he's facing the ultimate sacrifice. He says, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. The time of my departure has come. There was a Roman custom of pouring out a cup of wine after a meal as an offering to the gods. And Paul indicates that he is ready for life itself to be poured out as a sacrifice to God. The time for Paul has come to be that living sacrifice that he writes in Romans 12 and verse 1. It's going to be stepping from this earth and into the hands of God the Father. Now what you do not find in these words are any hints of dread or despair. Paul never uses the word death. There are those who refuse to use it because it brings to mind a coffin and a grave. Paul doesn't use it because death now has a new tone. In 1 Thessalonians 4 and verse 13, it is as gentle as falling asleep. So Paul chooses to say, the time of my departure has come. Now this word has a connotation of unhooking an animal from its yoke, or a ship may be raising its anchor, being ready to go forth. And it is the last time for Paul on this earth, and he is preparing for the greatest journey to come to a close. Romans 14 and verse 7 through 8, Paul said, For none of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord, and whether we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord. You know, I spent a lot of time this week trying to find who made this statement. And I think I'd done about as an exhaustive search as I could do. And I could never find out who said it. But someone once said, the only life that bears being looked back upon is the life of, of Christian devotion and effort. It shows fairer when seen in the strange cross lights that come when we stand on the boundary of two worlds. With right radiance of eternity beginning to master the vulgar oil lamps of earth. Then when seen by these alone, all others have their shabbiness and selfishness disclosed to them. You know, we always like to use the term, our life flashing before our eyes when something is, is fixing to happen and we come very close to death. And I used to always say that I'd probably fall asleep if my life flashed before my eyes, being bored to death, even though that's truly not true. But it's, as if Paul was saying, I fought the good fight. I finished my course, I've kept the faith. This is flashing before Paul. You know, it must be a wonderful event to be able to meet that point of life where there are no regrets and no excuses. The Reformation scholar Erasmus, when his life was coming to an end, he said, I am a veteran and I have earned my discharge. 
and must leave the fighting to younger men. You know, sadly, we are surrounded by dropouts. Many of us here probably know Christians who we at one time looked up to that we do not see anymore. Those who have gone back to the world. And yet Paul challenges us with his inspired words to complete the course that has been ordained for us by God. And it truly requires a good fight. Literally, Paul is saying here, I've struggled a good struggle. And there is no way, no way to keep the faith apart from a constant agonizing struggle. We need to allow the total gospel message, which involves a personal commitment to God and the spreading of the truth in the body to get to that point of fighting the good fight. It was Paul who never lost hope. He never lost confidence in Christ or the gospel that he preached. As Paul's night comes closer and closer, he rejoices that he was able to triumph. But he did express at one point in his life his greatest fear. We find that in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 27, where he said, I discipline my body and keep it under control. Lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. He never feared for his soul's salvation because he knew whom he believed. But he did fear that there was a possibility that he might do something in a moment of weakness that would disqualify him for the task that God has placed before him. greatest fear of him where he might become unusable and have to be set on the shelf. Prior to his death, the columnist William F. Kirk looked back on his life and he wrote, the doctors know what his trained eye sees. He says it is the last of the night for me. One more swing while the dark clouds loom, and then I must leave this noisy park. It was a glorious game from the opening bell, good plays, bad plays, and thrills pell-mell. The speed of it burned my years away, but I thank God that he let me play. There's not a single one here this evening or anyone in our congregation who has ever had in their lives a lack of hardship and disappointments. We've all had. Paul certainly had the hardships and disappointments. In 2 Corinthians 4 and verses 8 through 10, he said, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of our Lord Jesus, so that the life also of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. Paul is looking out on the sunset He's not seeing a sunset where everything was glorious. <clears throat> he had those times of crisis. Like that time, his first trial. In 2 Timothy 4, verse 16, it says about that trial that no man stood with me, but all men have forsaken me. In verse 14, 
He said that Alexander the coppersmith did him much evil. Verse 10, that Demas had forsaken him because he loved the present world. Demas was one of the dropouts. He failed to bring about God's completion. The purpose that God had given him. The scriptures record Demas' spiritual decline. In Philemon, verse 24, he is a fellow laborer. Then in Colossians 4 and verse 14, it's just Demas. Now here, he is the one who had forsaken him. I don't know, maybe Demas got tired. Maybe he decided that somebody else should try to carry the load. Maybe he had the attitude of John the Baptist in John chapter 3, where John said it was time for me to fall back and for Jesus to move forward. There's a spiritual middle age spread that hurts more and damages more than the physical one. In Demas' case, the convictions were not deep enough for him to be able to resist that constant allurement that he was facing. And the last we hear of him, he moved to Thessalonica. There is one thing, however, that puts all of our disappointments in their proper place. That's in verse 7. 17 in 2 Corinthians 4. And the Lord stood by me and he strengthened me. So no one stood with Paul at his first trial. Paul looks forward to the multitudes in heaven. But no eye has seen, what no ear has heard. For the heart of man imagine of what God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 9. His life's beginning to ebb. He's looking beyond the human horizon. And this is where he can finally say that there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And I like the last part of this. Not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. In the past, Paul fought. In the present, he was ready to be offered. And in the future, there is a crown. <coughs> That is the life of a Christian. Then he gives the challenge to Timothy, and that challenge is equally valid to us today. Second Timothy 4 and verses 1 and 2, he says, I charge you in, in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is the judge to who is to judge the living and the dead. And by his appearing in the kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. The gospel is never out of season. It is never outdated, and it will never go out of date. Every one of us is charged to do the work of an evangelist. You know, it wasn't, at least to me, seemed like yesterday was New Year's. And here we are in October. I'm still trying to figure out where summer went. 
and I can't figure out if September had been erased from the calendar. It's moving that fast. For our children, at least when I was little, it seemed like time dragged by. From September to December, it seemed like December would never get you. Our two-week Christmas break seemed to fly past. It's like I woke up one morning on Christmas break, and the next morning I woke up, it was over, and I was headed back to school. And then from January to June, I thought those months would never end. And then summer started. The next thing I know, it was September again. Time dragged when I was little. But now that I'm older, I can't seem to slow it down as much as I would like. We pass by in this life so fast, so fast. The one thing that we have for us is an eternity with our Savior and with our Father. Our lights are dimming in this pilgrimage here. And it doesn't matter whether we are two or three years old, or 80 or 90 years old, our time is coming. It's traveling at the same speed. It's just some of us got an earlier stop. But it's going to soon be over. It's going to be the cross of Christ that stands silhouetted against the backdrop of human affairs. And everything else lies in the darkness of that eternal shadow. The events in life are like an adding machine. And the time will come when that total key is pressed. In a very second, in the blink of an eye, all of life is going to be calculated. And the sum of that calculation will stand for eternity. So for us, in between time, stand beside Paul. Take a look at our last look that someday we're going to be looking at. Take those steps today so that we can enjoy God's tomorrow. If there is anyone here this evening that is in need of the invitation, if you would like to take the opportunity to obey the gospel tonight, we want to give you that opportunity through repentance, confession, New Testament baptism. You begin, can begin that new life. So that when you are looking out over the sunset, when that sun goes down, you know where your destination will be. And maybe you just need to get some things squared away with God before that time comes. Or maybe you just need our prayers. Whatever needs you have, won't you come as together we stand and we sing. <coughs>
mouth is praised. Says my eyes were fixed on Jesus, I've lost sight of all beside. So in shame my spirit's vision, looking at the crucified. Seated. The table is prepared for those who do not have the opportunity to come forward this time. You'll be served. We gather around this table to partake of this memorial feast in the presence of God our Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And it is this time that so many years ago when Jesus had this overwhelming desire, he truly wanted to spend this time and share this meal with his disciples, and that still holds true today. So let us take the time and the opportunity now to focus all of our thoughts on that evening and just truly Remember what took place and why it took place. Jesus gave us this bread. He instituted a very common substance that is available around the world, something very simple, flour and water. And he gave us this to remember the body that was broken through those nails, through the spear, through the beatings that he took before they nailed him to that cross, and that crown of thorns that they broke the skin on his head with. But we remember that body being nailed to that cross, and what a tremendous sacrifice and painful sacrifice that was. Would you bow with me, please, as we Thanks for the bread. Our Father in heaven, we ask you bless this bread that represents the body of your son, Jesus Christ. And as we partake of this, let us reflect on that moment in time when salvation came to this world and that tremendous sacrifice on your behalf of giving us your son to die in our stead for the wrongs that we have committed. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to remember that sacrifice. May we take it in a manner that is acceptable and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. continue in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we ask your blessings on this fruit of the vine that represents the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. The blood that washed away the sins of the world. The blood that cleanses us as Christians to this day. And we are so grateful, Lord, for that sacrifice. We pray that we will honor you each and every day of our lives because of it. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Ask him on the table for those who do not have the opportunity to give this morning. Can you bow with me, please? Our Father in heaven, we are blessed beyond measure. We thank you so much for allowing us to be the caregiver 
the caretakers of all that you give us. And we pray, Lord, that you will find our gifts in return acceptable, that they may be used to continue the work and to further thy kingdom on this earth. That you continue to bless us richly as we continue to share the gospel message and our Christian lives with those around us. We thank you for everything that we have and everything that we are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Evening of prayer tomorrow night. Ladies Bible class this coming Saturday night. So if you can be here, we deeply appreciate it. Anybody have anything further before we're dismissed with prayer? This time, will you please stand? We'll be dismissed with prayer. That's right. Heavenly Father, we just want to say you here tonight and in our lives as each others who live in heaven. So Jesus Christ, the Son of God, teach us others who to us very word. That's what we have today. That's our sign. That's what we have. Give it to us. It's a cool weather tonight. Give it to us. The real word. And then our lives are going to be better because of the blood. Thank you. Say this blood. Thank you, Cross the Cavern. Give us your sins. Watch us see so white. Give it to us. The real word. Hey, honey, not. Have a dinner. This is a lesson tonight. We need to work here and share with tomorrow. Give them to us. Just blood over. Give them to us. The real word. Have just in the hospitals. Have surgery. Have all the family members. Take all of them. All of them. All of them. Well. Say this prayer. Debra, uh, Ruth, and Rick. Uh, get well. Give them to us. The real word. Have a Tanya. Have a. Uh, no doctors and came first to get well. Yeah. Uh, Joel Foster, and she get in that. Was all, all, all the numbers of us picked out. Give to us the real word. Have a Jesus, think on the cross. Do the Jesus in the way. And we can have That's kind of guessing here. That ball is just about over. Give them to us, to where you were. If a military, any women, armed forces, police officers, and all, all the other ones, but those in Florida, those are lives. Give them to us, to where you were. Uh, just let me hear, let us just some modern. Thank you, Cross, to where you were. Inside the church, inside the church, the good word, she said, God's word, look at first Peter, look at his father, give it to us, it's the good word, all things are father, all will be done, name of Jesus, amen. Amen. amen.